How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. So we are back for another daily show. I want to apologize for not getting one out yesterday. I had a few things to sort out and um, yeah, that had to take priority. But now we are back and hopefully we can get a run of them coming again each and every single day. Now, on today's show, we're going to be talking about Kieran Trippier because he's withdrawn from the England squad uh, to attend a personal FA hearing for betting charges. Um, Cristiano Ronaldo has been tested positive for coronavirus. And the last piece of news involves Gabriel Martinelli because he's been talking about his injury, when he's expecting return and the current form of the Arsenal team. I represent my fucking self. How are we doing, guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. That's right. So the first place we're going to start is England and it always seems to be one problem after another. Now, I don't really rate Gareth Southgate as a manager, but I do kind of feel sorry for him because in recent weeks, he's just had nothing but problems on his doorstep from players. And, um, you know, we had the whole issue involving Greenwood and Phil Foden um, whilst, you know, on um, international duty and breaching coronavirus regulations and everything else. And then we had the other incidents um, involving the likes of Jadon Sancho um, and a couple of others for the last game. And then this one, um, he's now missing Kieran Trippier uh, because he has to attend a personal FA hearing in relation to betting charges. Just absolutely mad. Um, Trippier has been given leave to attend a disciplinary hearing over an FA betting charge. um, And Gareth Southgate confirmed that as pre-match press conference. Um, There is not a lot that I can say about that really. It is not something which is in my control. Um, I've got to focus on preparing the team with the players I have got available. We always find solutions. It is an opportunity for somebody else. If I lose focus on the job in hand, there is a million distractions, frankly. Um, So this is another distraction, but it is something I have got to plough on through. Uh, Kieran Trippier was charged in May with misconduct relating to alleged betting around his £21.7 million transfer from Tottenham to Atletico Madrid. Um, Trippier has insisted that he has never profited from betting on football or from others doing so on his behalf. So, yeah, it's pretty obvious what this charge relates to. He leaves Tottenham and goes to Atletico Madrid. And it's whether he has notified friends, family, people that are close to him that this move is going to happen. Now, with all due respects, Kieran Trippier moving to Atletico Madrid was not the kind of transfer that you kind of expect. It's not something that you would kind of entertain. You would think, nah. It's not the first name that would come out of your mouth if you was thinking where would Kieran Trippier possibly move to. So I can only imagine that the odds were quite high um, before the media got wind of it and that it was actually gonna be going ahead. Um, So if somebody who would have had the knowledge from Trippier as to what's happening, went into the bookies, put a large sum of money on it, they would have got a very, very sizable profit. Um, The fact he's been charged doesn't look great. I don't know the whole ins and outs of the story and everything else, but he's got to be attending the hearing. And, um, you know, that's his choice to do that as well. He's been granted permission to go to it, and obviously he wants to clear his name. Innocent until proven guilty is what I've always said. Um, So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. But for Gareth Southgate, like I was saying, I feel a little bit sorry for him because it just seems like there is so many things going on and it's not football related. We can criticise Gareth Southgate for his team selections. Now, I know they won um, in their last game um, against Belgium, but... The team lineup was not correct. I don't understand it. I still don't understand why Jack Grealish is on the bench. 
Um, and there's so many other players within that team. And I don't know how they're even there. I don't know how they're in the squad, let alone starting. Um, even the likes of Eric Dyer. Don't even get me started. But those kind of things, Gareth Southgate is in full control of. And those are the things that you can criticise him for. But all of these issues with stuff outside of football, it's not his fault. And it's hampering everything. And it's must be difficult as a manager to focus on the team and focus on what you want to do and where you want to go when you've got all of these issues outside of football cropping up. So in that respect, yeah, I do feel sorry for him. But we'll wait and see what happens to Kieran Trippier. Um, next piece of news. And um, yeah, I was a little bit shocked when this one came out yesterday. But uh, Cristiano Ronaldo has tested positive for coronavirus. Um, and he will miss Portugal's Nations League game against Sweden tonight. Um, the Juventus forward is doing well without symptoms and is in isolation, according to a statement from the Portuguese Football Federation. Uh, the remaining squad all returned negative results after being tested on Tuesday and are available for the Group A3 match in Lisbon. Um, on Monday, Ronaldo posted an image of himself with the squad around the long table during a meal with a caption, United, on and off the field. So, <laughs> I'll tell you what I will say about this, and this is what I don't get, and I'm going to bring this back to the whole Kieran Tierney situation when he was with Scotland and how he's been told he has to isolate for 14 days. Now, I'm looking at the picture here of Ronaldo, which he posted on Monday, and he is sitting around a long table with all of his Portuguese teammates. They're all in close proximity to each other. None of the players, from what I see here, are wearing any kind of face masks or anything else. They're all ready to have dinner. Um, so everybody is in close proximity of each other. That's the first thing. But yet, Cristiano Ronaldo, a day later, tested positive for coronavirus. But because everyone else is negative, they're free to continue playing and continue being around each other. Now, the Kieran Tierney situation was that he was around somebody that tested positive for COVID. He's had three tests of his own, which have been negative. But yet, he's got to isolate for 14 days. Can you understand why I'm a little bit confused here and why I don't know what the hell is going on? Why do the Portuguese players not have to isolate if 24 hours before a positive test result, they were all within close proximity of Cristiano Ronaldo and there were actually no um, guidelines being met because around the dinner table and they're not wearing masks or social distancing or anything. So where's the difference? Why has Tierney got to isolate for 14 days, but all the Portugal players can go and play against Sweden tonight? Someone explain that to me. It's just baffling, mind-boggling. I just genuinely can't understand it at all, and I don't think anybody knows anything that's going on anymore. Um, but all I can say to Cristiano Ronaldo is, of course, um, get well soon. Um, it doesn't look like there's any issues. He has no symptoms. Um, but yeah, he has coronavirus. And again, um, I wish him well and hopefully he makes a full recovery very, very soon. Um, last piece of news involves Arsenal's Gabriel Martinelli. Um, some may have forgotten about him um, after he picked up a knee injury um, back in training in June. Um, and that will rule him out for pretty much all of the 2020 calendar. Um, so it's probably 2021 when we're looking to see him and we knew that anyway. It sounded like such an innocuous injury, um, first of all. Um, and it's ended up being quite severe. Um, he was doing really well before the injury. Um, Ten goals in all competitions. Um, he underwent a successful operation to repair a lesion in the cartilage of his knee. Um, the 19 year old has revealed that he was scared when he first sustained the injury, um, but he hopes to begin working with a ball in training in the near future after making progress in his recovery. Um, he was speaking to the club's official website and he says, I am feeling very well. 
I'm regaining confidence and I can feel my knee is better. Um, after an injury like this, you are kind of scared to force the knee again, but the past couple of weeks it has been fine and soon I can start training with the football. Um, after being forced to watch from the sidelines, Martinelli believes the team have adopted a positive mindset under Mikel Arteta and must target finishing in the top four. I think we have an excellent squad and along with Mikel's forward thinking and winning mentality, we can carry on doing well. We are playing well and training well. Everyone wants to win and we are all giving everything. I believe this season is very promising. We won trophies last season and I believe we can this season again and also qualify for the Champions League. So yeah, um, very positive um, in terms of the news and um, the recent pictures of Martinelli not wearing a knee brace anymore were really encouraging. Um, the fact that he's looking now to start progressing and really stepping up his rehabilitation and working with the ball and everything else is really, really good signs. Um, it's just so weird how he got this injury. We still don't know who actually tackled him or caused this injury because it sounded like it was so innocuous, so minor. And he's ended up having to have an operation. And this was in June. He's not going to be coming back until the end of 2020, start of 2021. So he would have been out for a good six months or so. That's kind of like near the scale of an ACL injury. Um, those are predominantly around about nine months, but it's not far short. It's a very serious injury when you think about it. Um, the fact that he's had a lesion in his cartilage and um, yeah, he's obviously getting over the mental side of things, which is always a big hurdle. And he's um, in the best possible hands. And I, for one, can't wait to see Martinelli back on the pitch firing and um, a part of this team because it's looking very exciting for the future. So, yeah, good news on Gabriel Martinelli. So there we go. That is it for today's DT's Daily. As usual, let me know in the comment section what you think about today's topics. If you're new around here, hit the subscribe button, smash a like on this video, and I will see you lot soon. I'm out of here.